Okay, and we'll know in five seconds if that worked because there's like a five second delay. So give YouTube a second to catch up with us here. And it's working, great. All right, uh, over to you, Madam Chairperson. All right, um, hello everybody. Um, so this meeting is officially called to order. Um, and the beyond the, our second item on the agenda is amendment and approval of minutes from March 12th. No, that's wrong. From our last meeting. What was that? What was the date of our uh, last May 14th? May 14th. Mm. May 14th. Um, so um, I just want to say, uh, a couple of things uh, just to remind people that um, discussion, uh, a significant discussion of any item outside of an official meeting is um, an illegal meeting. So um, we can share information, but in terms of uh, like uh, discussion and agreeing on things or disagreeing on things um, that uh, really should be done uh, during our official meetings. Um, and uh, so uh, um, Jane is our official recording secretary. And so she will continue to uh, take minutes um, unless for some reason she is unable to attend the meeting. Um, so on that note, um, would we like to approve the minutes from May 14th as they were submitted? Yes. Move to approve. Um, all right, all right. There's, there's no, no one has any uh, further discussion or amendments or changes that they feel need to be made to, to May 14th minutes, minutes. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, and now on to our director's report. Okay, um, so I will keep this director's report brief so we can focus on the stage three reopening plan. So, um, just, okay. Um, so I'm happy to announce that curbside service is going uh, extremely well. We're getting about 100 pickups a week between the two libraries, of course, um, and patrons are just uh, just happy and friendly and uh, jubilant when they, uh, they call us on the phone. They're psyched that we're here. We're psyched that we're able to help them. Um, and, and it's a real feel-good experience all around. Um, shout out to the staff who've been doing a great job, um, especially Joe and Nancy, who uh, answer a lot of the phone calls and, and get a lot of the, you know, the kudos for, for being here. Um, see, I will say uh, credit where credit's due. Uh, the staff uh, was very happy with the way the town handled the shutdown. Um, so when we all came back, morale was very high. Um, we all felt very valued with the way that the, um, the departments were shut down and the way it was handled. So a lot of towns weren't, weren't as lucky. So. Um, that certainly helped uh, a lot. So uh, we're all happy to be back. Um, and we're excited to have more people back in the building, hopefully soon. Um, as you know, the governor's task force um, has authorized libraries to open on June 17th. Unfortunately, um, out of the 30 Lion libraries that I've talked to and the Chatham Health District libraries, and I meet with those two groups on a pretty much a weekly basis, not a single one of them, including us, is ready to open on June 17th. Um, it's a matter of supplies. Uh, the biggest barrier is the literal barrier. The plexiglass shields um, are on back order just about everywhere. Um, so those are the big things that have to be installed before we can reopen. And then there's a the matter of getting Lysol wipes, which um, we're still short on even just for staff use right now. Um, sanitizer, uh, cleaning spray, gloves, et cetera. So that'll be in the phase three reopening plan. But um, the, the headline is no libraries are really ready to open on June 17th or very few. Um, we're hoping for more of an early July, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I'm happy to say that we are working with uh, Youth and Family Services to help promote uh, our summer programs and their summer programs and kind of working on ways for kids to kids and teens to engage with the community, uh, you know, from a distance. So that's exciting. Um, we're also working closely with the elementary school with, uh, with summer reading, as we always do, although it is a little bit different this year because... We're not as encouraging of people coming in. We're just encouraging them to pick up their items, curbside pickup, and you know, doing it as much remotely as possible. So that is a little different. Um, 
we got a surprise gift from our friends at the Killingworth Library. They were getting rid of a set of very nice children's shelves um, that fit in perfectly with what we are planning to buy and what we are still planning to buy for the downstairs children's area. So we've got uh, four lovely bright yellow shelves that we're currently um, moving around the children's area. It's the perfect time to do that because we're just doing a, a lot of weeding and rearranging. So, um, oh, so you, you already have the shelves? Um, I got the shelves from the Killingworth Library, right? So not the ones that we're planning to purchase that uh, yeah, that capital expense, but yeah, but the, but the, yeah, you already like were able to pick them up and get them into our children's yeah. area. Yep, uh, yeah. The benefit of having two library employees with a pickup truck and being friends with the Killingworth director—it's <laughs> it all worked out. Lori, really. she's still there. Yes, it is Lori Pritchard, former assistant <laughs> director at uh, East Haddam. So, <laughs> Thank all you. right. Yeah. Good. Good and score. so they're new shelves. They're not ones that um, they're in great shape. Um, wow, lightly That's used, great. but you would not know they weren't new. They they look awesome. That's and great. They're bright yellow. So yeah. Maureen will be very happy when she gets back. <laughs> that is her favorite color. So. <laughs> they must have civilized She'll children. Surprise! She doesn't know what happened. But <laughs> yeah, I guess so. No one was climbing on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hotspots and tablets. I had a meeting um, just yesterday, actually, with a representative from T-Mobile, um, and they're offering what I think is a really good deal, which is um, for $20 a month, they will just give us a tablet, and we can lend that tablet out to patrons to use in the library, or we could even lend it out as a circulating item for patrons that might not have access to internet. Um, they're also offering hotspots for around $30 a month. Um, I need to look into all of this still, kind of see how it fits in with the budget. Um, okay. But the idea would be with, you know, we're trying to limit the amount of time people spend in the building. And one mm -hmm. of the things that people spend the most time in the building doing is using the internet. So with these devices, if we were able to lend them out or even just say, you know, go sit out on the picnic table or in the parking lot or somewhere with nice wide open air, mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't need to be inside the building to use the internet, um, whether we decide to circulate or just expand Wi-Fi into, well into the parking lot. So um, I am looking into it. I will give you updates. I just had that meeting yesterday, but I wanted to, to mention it because it, it fits into what we're talking about tonight. All right, and do you have an, any idea about how many you would be wanting or needing? Well, we have, um, I don't think it's, it's gonna be productive to purchase new computers next year. Um, we have a computer budget for 2020, which expires at the end of this month. And uh, we will be purchasing something from that. But next year we have, you know, money in our new computer budget, which normally we need because we have so many computers the public are using, but we're, we're lowering that down from, how many does Rathbun have? Five. So about a dozen across the library system, we're going to have uh, maybe five or six across the library system. So we're cutting our number of computers the public's able to use in half. So if we can divert those funds to pay for these tablets or hotspots and maybe you know, okay. offer those instead, I think mm -hmm. that's where the funding would come from. I just have to do the math on that. All right, um, yeah, you know, and that's, uh, we'll talk about it at the finance committee meeting. Yeah. Um, assume, Mike? Assuming we yes, get- Yes, sir. Uh, for either library, is there a need now to purchase more outside furniture? Um, I'm looking into that as well. Um, I, for, I forgot what's in the shed at Rathbun, <laughs> but um, EHFBL is the two picnic tables and they're both, uh, very much in use. Uh, I'm not sure where else we'd put them. I guess we could use the front lawn, but um, yeah, I'd say I'd say it's something we need to consider as part of phase three, buying new furniture. Um, and so, the good thing well, about- I mean, and, if, yeah. yeah, if you're trying to get people out of the building, but you know, uh, I guess you could put a couple of picnic tables on the other side of the rear sidewalk at EHFPL. Yeah, six feet away, of course, right. That's, right, a, yeah. that's a really good idea. Um, and the benefit is that there's uh, currently loans from the government where um, we would get a 75% reimbursement from the federal government for anything cool. we buy that's related to COVID um, as part of being a town department. So um, yeah, let's look into that. Absolutely. Um, Who um, was it that has the devices that you're considering? Uh, T-Mobile. And that's the only thing that gives me pause is I don't know what kind of service, uh, 4G service T-Mobile gets here in East Haddam. I know years ago I had, yeah. it's probably 15 years ago, I had T-Mobile and they were horrible, but that's a lifetime in, you know, electronic age. Right. So yeah. I, I, that's the one thing I'd have to look into, try to find somebody with T-Mobile and see how their 4G coverage is. 
Well, I mean, the other thing is, is to also check with uh, AT&T and Verizon and see if they have any sort of similar program. Right. You tell them what T-Mobile's offering. Maybe we'll get a, a nice deal from them too. Yeah, or, or something roughly equivalent. Right. Something that is, is just monthly and you can cancel at any time or would we be bound? Yeah, that's that? what's really cool about it is you can cancel any time. So let's say we have, you know, three tablets for three months, you know, that's 60 bucks a month and then we're done. We couldn't purchase a tablet for that price. Yeah. And you know? what about, you know, if, um, I mean, if we're taking these tablets outside and stuff, um, if any damage happens to the tablet or it's dropped or anything uh -huh. like that. We would have to purchase it at a prorated amount. And that's where it gets kind of, I don't know that you'd want the public to take them home. Right. That so becomes the problem, the liability becomes, of the device. Right. Yeah. If, if it remains on library grounds, would, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, um, the devices have a, you can get software where there's a, a kill switch. So if somebody was to if you say, hey, keep this on library grounds and they walked off with it, you could make it so that a message pops up on the tablet says, return this to the library. It won't work anywhere else. Wow. Um, or the hotspot just won't work at all. You can, there's, you know, kill switches for the things to turn them off. So and, uh, that's theft prevention. <laughs> you know, if it can, you, you can get insurance on it the way you do on a cell phone through I do mobile. not know. I, I did not ask that question. I should. Right. Yeah, I would think yeah. I would think you'd be able to do it through like a third party, like uh, Square Trade or something. Okay. All right. Yeah. This this sounds like a good uh, discussion for the finance committee. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And that would be would that be a COVID related um, in, investment by the library? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I certainly would not be considering it if it wasn't for COVID. That just, you know, expense wise and liability wise. All right. Um, unfortunately, we do have a staff member who's currently in the hospital. So um, I think I've given you all some information about that. Please keep her in your thoughts. We do not know when she'll be returning to work. Uh, we just wish her all the best. And um, yeah, so um, there was also uh, the past president of the Friends of the Library passed away recently, uh, Sue Barnes. Um, she was the president of the Friends about 10 years ago. Um, she did a lot for the library. She loved the library. And she has uh, asked that um, donations be made to the Friends of EHFPL. Um, you know, her family's rather has asked for donations to the Friends of EHFPL in her memory. So Friends of EHFPL should be getting some lovely donations from that. And we, of course, will send a card to uh, the family thanking them for thinking of us and expressing our sympathies for, for Sue. Um, and if you knew Sue, please, uh, please do send a sympathy card and reach out. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, when they posted the uh, info on in the current, at least, on yeah. where to mail the check, they didn't put the friend's uh, reading room P.O. box. So you right. may find some in your mail. It's, it's already happened, but that's not a big deal. Um, the friends, uh, half their mail comes here anyway, and they just come and pick it up. So it's, that's routine. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. We used to share a PO box with the friends uh, before we were a town department. So we're, you know, we're used to it. Yeah. I didn't know how much mail that was still coming the wrong way. Half. But, yeah. All right. Um, and the uh, only other thing in my report is the uh, public reopening plan, but that's a little bit later on our agenda. So I will hold off on that. Um, are there any questions? I have one question. Yes. If you could just talk about, and you briefly mentioned the, the shortages in, or you're coming up close to short on, in the personal protection equipment. Right. Um, and I know Karen had mentioned that we're short, you guys were short on wipes. And I the wonder wipes if you're is a crisis, yes. ordering a little extra ahead, or did those come in, or where? We are, um, the town is purchasing all the supplies in bulk um, and sharing it with all the town departments. So we're heavily reliant on uh, the town and their, their bulk purchasing power at this, at this point. Uh, one thing I'm looking into is uh, perhaps making some reusable wipes for the staff to use um, in the meantime, something that won't damage the electronics. Because, um, you know, we can use the spray, which we have no shortage of on just about everything except the electronic devices. Mm. Um, so if we run out of the wipes, then it's, I think we're down to spraying uh, paper towels with the, the spray and wiping it that way. Not ideal, but it should work. Right, John? That shouldn't damage anything. I wouldn't think so. Oh, good. Okay. 
So we have a plan B. It's not ideal, but yeah, you don't want the the idea is obviously you don't want the stuff dripping into the keyboard. So uh, right, but as long as you're not uh, saturating the the paper towel with so much liquid that it's dripping, you're probably okay. Okay. You know, I wonder if it's worth considering getting those silicon keypad covers that you can use. I mean, I've thought about that, but you, you still have to clean them. Right. You do have to keep them clean, right. but it, it keeps it make, the stuff from it keeps some it water the uh, waterproof liquid from going into the keyboard because you can okay. you pick them up and uh, and then wipe them down and then put them back on. Yeah, you can actually like yeah. run the things through a sink if you had to. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, my experience with those is this was a few years ago, a number of years ago. Um, was that it made it harder to type? It does so it does. And with some of our patrons now, needing a lot of help already on the computers, I didn't want to add an extra obstacle if we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. Right. Especially because we got to stand six feet away from them when we're helping now. So that makes it even harder. <laughs> mm. All right. Um, well, since uh, I know that none of our um, subcommittees met, uh, so that brings us to... Um, unfinished business and the first item on that under that is library reopening plan so we're going to leap right into the uh, library reopening plan did everyone have a chance to look over all seven pages of it yes all right so what screen am i sharing now do you guys see a powerpoint or do i have to switch technical difficulty You'll have to switch. I just see the um, okay. agenda. You still see the agenda. All right. Thank you. I will stop. Okay. Now I see Chris. <laughs> now I see Dawn. <laughs> if you switch to gallery mode, oh, never mind. I'll just. Okay. Okay. There you go. There All it right. is. We can see it now. There it goes. Okay. Yes, so the. Uh, I have to minimize <laughs> you all. Okay. Isn't that fancy? Okay, so the East Haddam Library System's four-stage reopening plan, part two. Um, just to recap, the state library um, uh, split the plan into four parts. Uh, the first part was minimal staff in buildings during the ongoing health emergency. That was our lockdown phase, which lasted from March 16th to May 26th. Um, we began with a complete closure, uh, at which point we maximized our online offerings, uh, did a whole bunch of online programs, um, offered uh, more digital materials, um, in May, our full-time employees uh, started coming back one day a week, one at a time. Uh, work from home was done to the fullest extent possible, um, which meant a lot of work on the website got done, which was great. Uh, stage two is where we currently are. Um, most of the staff has returned to work in the buildings in compliance with state and local directives. Actually, all of our staff has returned to work in the buildings. Um, the public is not allowed in the building at this time. We are offering curbside service, uh, pickup and delivery. The staff is working on staggered schedules, uh, which means, for example, we have um, a daytime shift and an evening shift and a weekend shift, and those, they do not cross over. So that way, if one shift gets sick, we don't have to quarantine the entire staff. Uh, God forbid anyone gets sick, but mm -hmm. something you have to think about these days. Um, computers, copiers, and related services are unavailable, uh, but Wi-Fi is available from the parking lot. And we continue to offer our programs and digital materials online, and that's going to stay the same through phase three also. Um, any questions about where we are or where we've been? Good. Um, how did uh, you, uh, last meeting, you had proposed um, a plan, but there was, uh, it was, a lot of stuff was open-ended at that point, you know, including right. when it was actually going to become implemented. So we didn't oh, right. vote on it. Uh, because it hadn't, I felt like it hadn't, wasn't buttoned down enough and to vote on it would have maybe just added more confusion. Right, trapped us in a, a yeah. Um, but can you let us know, was it, was there much deviation from that phase two um, um, plan? Uh, vir virtually it none. It, it's gone very much according to plan, uh, which is, which is a good thing. Okay. You know, a little, a couple of minor differences where we're storing the books. Um, I think we're quarantining for 72 hours on the books instead of 48, uh, stuff like that, like little tiny details, but the broad strokes are very much in line with what was proposed. Okay. So, you know, when 
when it hit reality, everything, everything works pretty well. You're able to, have you had to, have you actually delivered books to people in addition? I have made 100% of the deliveries both times. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people are, are, there's no confusion when you leave stuff out on the tables and no one takes the wrong bag or, you know, like, oh, those no one things. has taken the wrong bag. So that doomsday scenario has not happened yet. And we haven't okay. needed appointments uh, one thing that changed a little bit was I think the initial plan was just to leave everything out and people just come at their leisure. We realized our tables aren't that big because we've had a lot of demand. So mm. um, now people just call us when they're on their way or when they're in the parking lot and we, okay. we put it on that. So okay. right. kind so of an appointment if you think about it, but. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. I was just curious, curious how that went. Yeah, it's going very well. Very well. All right. All right. Um, so the next phase uh, after phase one and two is, is stage three. Um, and that is the stage where we will be opening up to the public uh, for limited services. Um, we will once again have our stacks open to the public so people can browse and select their own materials um, instead of going online and ordering them or calling the library and playing, uh, you know, let's see what you've got. Um, computer services uh, are going to be limited to 30 minute sessions. Um, there are some libraries that are just not having computer services at all. And while I, I understand why you would want to do that, there are a lot of very important things our patrons do on these computers, like search for jobs, uh, online banking, even checking in with, you know, loved ones is, is very important. So um, we are going to be offering them, but we are going to be just limiting uh, how often you can use them. And as I said, you're only, only about half the computers are going to be available. Uh, patrons and staff are going to be required to wear appropriate uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, staff will routinely clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. And all programs will remain online. Um, the big change that you're going to see when you walk into the library is that most seating is going to be removed to discourage informal social gathering. And we're going to just try to encourage patrons to be here as little as possible, which goes against everything we've ever tried to do. So that's, you know, that's a major change. Um, and we're going to continue to promote curbside service and delivery so that if you don't have to come inside, you don't, you don't come inside. Um, there is really like um, with phase two, I was able to say with some certainty that it would be the day after Memorial Day. July 6th is, is a target, but that target is moving. So I do not know when the official date will be. We're okay. hoping it's early July, um, but it really just depends on that equipment that is in short supply right now and making sure that we have enough to keep ourselves and the, the public safe. Okay, and, um, and, and that includes the um, plexi barriers? That is the number one most important thing with number two being wipes, yes. Okay. Um, so, the, uh, the libraries around the state were pretty much lockstep in how curbside was going to work, but there's a lot of deviation and uh, you know competing philosophies on how the reopening should work. Uh, we need to do what's best for, uh, for our town, um, and I, you know, that's what this plan aims to do. So you might hear about some libraries doing, um, well, like the children's area, a lot of libraries are completely closing down their children's areas, um, which is not something I agree with for, uh, for our community. Um, I believe that it, you know, it closing it down denies service to our youngest patrons. And um, as staff members, you don't want to be in the position of telling someone that their their kid can't pick out a book. That's a very uncomfortable situation. Um, prohibiting patrons from browsing shelves in the children's area will cause more issues than it solves, um, especially because we're expecting children's attendance to be at an all time low this summer, um, and we're putting a lot of safeguards in place to mitigate the. Um, uh, the risk of COVID. So um, a lot of libraries in their children's areas have basically little tiny playgrounds. Um, they have like kitchen sets, maker spaces, climbing structures, things like that. In those libraries, you really don't have a choice. You've got to shut that down. There's no way to make it safe. Um, we fortunately are able to remove a lot of furniture. We can remove all the toys and we can make it so that our children's areas, um, the only thing you can do there is browse for books. Okay. And, you know, uh, with that in mind, and again, I know a lot of parents, mine, myself included, are not going to be bringing their kids to the, the library this summer. 
Um, they'll be bringing, they might come in themselves and pick out books. Um, they might do curbside pickup, but kids themselves aren't, you know, just like at the supermarket are not going to be a common site, which, you know, where, I never where, thought I'd say that, but yeah. <laughs> where will you be able to put the uh, furniture? Um, so at Rathman, it's very easy. We've, uh, we'll be closing off the book nook, the conference room, and the historical room is restricted to staff only. So we can move a lot of stuff into those three areas. Uh -huh. Also the shed out there. Uh, EHF Trail really only has the shed and the back room, which is already overflowing with, uh, with the toys. Um, so I've asked the town office and they have agreed to find space uh, in the municipal complex to store some of our excess furniture uh, for the duration. So uh, right. town crews will be helping us with the moving and rearranging. Um, so Including yes, obviously we cannot store it here. <laughs> You'll be able to take the computers as well? Computers we can store here. We have room for the computers. Okay. Um, yeah. It's nice to hear that, uh, you know, be working with the town to, you know, get that resolved yeah. has been. Uh, yeah, I would say our relationship with the town is is closer than ever. We've all had to band together um, as a result of this crisis, share supplies, share intel, resources, and it's it's been going very well. So good, good. Um, furniture, as I said, this will be the biggest, uh, the most noticeable thing when you re-enter the libraries. Um, in the interest of public health and safety, patrons are going to be encouraged to make their visits brief. Um, and one way to encourage people to not spend a lot of time at the libraries, which again is not something I ever thought I'd say, um, is to remove uh, public seating. Um, most of our public seating is going to be placed in storage uh, along with all the toys. Um, one added benefit of removing the furniture is that it creates more space for, for social distancing. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a lot easier to, uh, you know, to keep people safe inside the library. Um, one thing that I've been talking with, with the, the staff who works in the, the children's area, uh, evenings, weekends, daytimes, is that they would feel safer if the computers were removed from that area. And um, I, I have to agree. I know in the summertime, it's, it's usually a great site when you see kids down there working together, playing games, having fun, but you know, you want to remove any temptation to stick around. And even if you had computers there that were, you know, off, um, kids would still play with the mice at the keyboards. They, they always do. So um, the safest thing to do right now is to remove them. Um, as restrictions ease, you know, the, one of the first things we'll restore are uh, computers in the kids area. But um, for the time being, we are going to take those out. All right. Any questions so far? No, it all seems. Uh, anyone else have any questions or? Okay. At this point. Okay. Uh, feel free to jump in if I, you know, if I say anything strange or if you have any questions. Happy to happy to answer as we go along. I'm saving all mine for the end. <laughs> Which is fine too. Which is fine too. <laughs> All right, um, so the state guidelines for occupancy is 50% of the maximum building occupancy according to the, the fire marshal's recommendation or the number of people that can be safely accommodated while adhering to social distancing guidelines, uh, whichever is lower. Um, however, I can't think of a single location where the fire marshal's recommendation, even half of that, is going to be larger than people standing six feet apart from each other. So um, that pretty much everywhere is going to be the, uh, the guideline. Um, we don't know what that is here yet because we haven't taken all the furniture out. Once that furniture has been removed, we'll be able to calculate how many we can safely, uh, how many patrons we can safely fit in the library. Um, but that being said, uh, even at our peak, we rarely have more than 10 patrons, you know, in the building at a single time. One of the funny benefits of being a small town with two libraries um, is that instead of a thousand people going to one small building, you know, in a week, you have a thousand people going to two small buildings, you know, 500 each, and that cuts down on the number of people. So we're, we're actually quite lucky in this case um, that we're able to, we're not really gonna have to worry about the occupancy. But if we do, there is always a plan. Um, we'll be able to lock the doors from the outside. You can always exit, but you can't always get in. Put up a sign, say, we're sorry, the building's at full occupancy, please socially distanced from each other and a librarian will be out to let you know when it's safe to come in. Michael, how are you going to calculate the, um, the number of uh, safe? There is a formula in the state guidelines. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, but so it's not going to just take a six something to do with a circle and see how many times you can fit it into a space. 
I believe that would also work, but I was going to just measure it out. Uh, you know, it's something to do with space divided by six feet. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, uh -huh. but there is a formula and that's, that's what we're going to be using. Pi or D or something. Yeah. So it, it's, um, it's going to be interesting because, you know, because, uh, people would, might be able to separate themselves, mm -hmm. but if all the people in the library want to be in the mystery section at the same time, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter that, you know, there's right. only two or three people in the library. So, uh, you know, patrons are going to have to be patient and uh, the staff is going to have to keep an eye on, on it. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Uh, so I guess I'm not saving my question till the end, but um, please don't. No. <laughs> does, um, how, how does the staff feel about, um, you know, if, if there's someone not complying, do they feel empowered yeah. to ask them to, to please either, you know, come back another time or um, just remind them that they need to stay six, they should be staying six feet apart? I know, I know it's easy with the right. mask. It's like no mask, <laughs> no service. You won't wear a mask, uh, you know, well, but then there's the whole health issue thing. So I, I would actually say the masks is, has people, uh, has the staff more on edge than the social distancing. Oh, okay. um, which could be more of a gentle reminder like oh sorry guys can you just stand a little bit further apart or just you know wait a second i'm sure it'll be done just a mm -hmm. minute you know that's you could do that as more of a friendly suggestion and most people i mean i know when i go to the supermarket i'm crazy about making sure i stay six feet away from others and I, i've seen a lot of other shoppers do that as well so you know as a society we're all just getting kind of used to that uh, mm -hmm. as a way of life so hopefully it will not be a, a big issue, but um, it, most of the people that come in the library, it's like the cheers bar. We know everybody by name, they know us. So it, it would be, you know, fairly laid back and easy just to say, oh, so, sorry, Bill, can you just uh, wait a second, stand six feet away? Or would you mind standing on that little circle we have over there? You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I'd say everybody's pretty comfortable with that. Um, the mask thing has people on edge uh, because of the, the news stories. Um, I'm sure we'll get to that when we bring up masks, but. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get to that when we bring up masks. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions? Uh, we will not be posting guards uh, as the state guidelines suggest. Um, <laughs> that was going to be my question. Not be we need digging to a moat or bringing up the, the drawbridge or anything. Yeah, uh, we, we don't have to get Nancy to Billy stick. <laughs> uh, she's already got one. No, she's, <laughs> she's ready to go. Yeah, she's been preparing for, for this for, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, mask policy. Okay, so um, the state and local guidelines are that everybody over the age of two who can safely wear a mask has to do so. Uh, that's not true of just the library, that's true of, of literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a supply of disposable masks for anybody who enters and isn't wearing one. Uh, the idea is that that takes a lot of the confrontation out. Because um, instead of saying, hey, you, where's your mask? We'd say, sorry, you must have forgotten. We've got paper mask, would you mind putting one on? So hopefully that's a little bit easier. And then if the person says, oh, sorry, I've got a health issue, I can't, um, then per ADA, we just need to make uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable accommodations to help that person out. Um, and the staff and I will, will go through literally every scenario and, um, you know, and work out what everybody's comfortable doing in that situation. Um, in general, it's probably going to be making sure you are six to 10 feet away from that person at all times, wearing gloves when you handle the items that they've come in contact with, and then disinfecting anything that they may have touched while they were in the building. Michael, are yeah. all of the staff comfortable wearing the, the masks or is there any with issues with wearing it? It's, it's a way of life now. Um, so yeah, uh, we all wear it when we're working together. So if we were, we're within six feet of each other, um, you know, and it's just staff in the building right now, we all have masks. You know, I've got my mask and I, I wore it for a good chunk of the day. So something we're doing. Um, if we're in our own private workspaces, um, and even after the public comes in, private workspace with a plexiglass shield and no one's really within eyesight, then of course you can take your mask off and just get your work done. But if you're in the public area or, if, you know, to set an example for patrons, uh, the staff is going to have to wear a mask, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, nobody's upset about that. And if they, um, if anyone is uncomfortable with a mask, we also will have the plexiglass shields, uh, which is an alternative to it. You had mentioned the medical issues, and I didn't know how anyone. Oh, no that. one has a medical issue that uh, on staff right now that restricts them from wearing a mask. Um, I don't know if that's going to change when it's going to be required more often. 
because right now, you know, we can all find our seats, sit down and take our mask off. But when the public comes back in, we will probably need to do it for longer stretches of time. And, you know, if someone has a medical issue, then we make every reasonable accommodation to help them. But uh, so far, uh, there are no issues. So even, um, even when there's no patron in the library, um, staff should probably wear masks in public spaces, right? Uh, uh, correct. It's more than just to uh, show uh, uh, support for the uh, policy um, to the right. patrons, right? Because it, it lasts, what, 15 minutes or something um, as, a, as a droplet or whatever? Right, so to, out of an abundance of caution, if we're walking through a public area, then we should be wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't wanna, you don't, you don't want to sneeze. You don't know where anybody else to sneeze. It's, it's always a good idea to, to wear a mask. Uh, that being said, we are going to disinfect things often and frequently. And anytime somebody touches a device or a frequently touched surface, that's going to get sprayed down and, and cleaned. So we're just doing everything out of an abundance of caution at this point. Um, so as I said, the staff is a little uh, nervous. Uh, I think all of us are nervous about... Um, approaching people who aren't wearing masks. Uh, Cause at this point, pretty much everybody knows that you're supposed to. So if the person has a medical reason, that's understandable. But if the person has some sort of other reason, uh, whatever that personal reason may be, it could get confrontational. Um, the simple policy is no mask, no service. Um, I know some libraries have reached out to local police departments uh, to let them know that they're gonna be enforcing the policy um, anybody that causes a disturbance inside the library is is breaking the law. You can never, wherever you go, berate or harass an employee or, you know, cause a dis public disturbance. Um, I don't think it's going to come to that. I really don't. I think most yeah. of our patrons are wonderful, law-abiding citizens. Um, if you're coming to the, if you're a library card holder, you're not, you know, an anarchist. So you'll probably be wearing a mask and, uh, <laughs> you know, doing your part to keep everyone around you uh, safe and healthy. So I, th I think it really is just, you know, you see those stories in the news and it, it's a little scary, but uh, we're gonna do everything we can to, to keep everybody nice, calm, cool, and feeling safe, so. Mike, you're, are we yes. uh, installing signage around? Soon? Oh yes, you know, lots you know of that. signs. Yep, masks required. They'll be a sign before you enter the building saying that masks are required and that social distancing needs to be observed. Um, big red letters, you won't be able to miss it. Um, and there'll be masks around, uh, masks, signs around the circulation area, pretty much anywhere you, you look, you're going to, you're going to be reminded that, you know, you have to follow the rules. We're all, we're all in this together, right? So, okay, oops, backwards. All right, uh, any questions on that? All right, uh, other things. Um, plexiglass barriers um, are required by law now uh, before we can reopen. So any publicly accessible workspace, um, especially the circulation desks, are going to have uh, plexiglass barriers around them with a little slot at the bottom so you can slide your materials under. Um, we're, we are going to be putting tape on our, our newish carpets to show people where proper social distancing is. <laughs> Um, at the Rathbun, we're going to tape off where that computer area is and kind of remind patrons or let them know that you're not supposed to be in that area unless you're using a computer, so to walk around it. So that way you don't have a lot of people walking in what would be a, a cramped corridor if you have someone on the computer and someone trying to walk behind them. So, um, yeah, a lot of signs. Um, and on nice days, uh, for the adult departments anyway, we're going to try our best to do uh, one-way traffic where you come in the back entrance and you leave out the front. Um, unfortunately, the kids areas, you don't have a choice. You've, you've got to double back unless you use the fire escape, which is not what the fire escape is designed for. So, um, And something that has made the Rathbun staff very ha happy, they will, there will be a staff only restroom at the Rathbun on the downstairs. So EHFPL, we're still talking about possibilities, but the hope is just that with, you know, really no seating and people not spending a lot of time in the library, the public won't have much use for a restroom anyhow. They'll be getting their items and leaving. So we'll see how things go. Um, we will have cleaning supplies and signage in the public restrooms that request that patrons clean up after themselves. Um, and of course the staff will be spraying down frequently touched areas, including restrooms at least three times a day. Uh, yes, I have a question. I know you said that there was, um 
that you'll be getting the supplies through town, but mm -hmm. would the library consider possibly asking maybe either one of the Lions Clubs for some donations or the Leo Club? Is it, do you think it's gonna to come to that or do you need the supplies, do you think? If the Lions or Leos have access to a stockpile of wipes that I don't know about, then absolutely we would love it. Or that. just like donations um, like from the from the parents or the, the Lions themselves that they do have. Stuff. I mean, again, as as a, a town department, uh, it is, you know, our we would always welcome supplies. We will never say no to, to supplies okay. that would ease the, the taxpayer's burden. But we, we also understand that everyone's suffering right now and uh, we have a responsibility to get those supplies ourselves too. So okay. uh, we, we don't turn down uh, donations. Okay. Um, there are libraries that are making appointments uh, for people to come and access the building or appointments to come and use the computer. I'm not convinced that approach is going to work with our community, um, particularly because both libraries are next to stops. So a lot of folks that go to the post office, while they're there, they stop at the library. Or while they're mm -hmm. going across the bridge to you know, get Dunkin' Donuts or go to the, the market, they stop at the library. Um, when they're in Moodis, you know, perhaps they're getting gas or going to the bank or the pharmacy, they stop at the library. We're a destination for many people, but for other people, we're one of the many places they're going to when they're running errands. Um, so the idea of uh, having people say, oh, we're going to be there at like 1030 and we can stay till 11. is just, I don't think it'll work for our, our community. And with the occupancy issues, I don't think it's necessary either. Mm -hmm. um, you I wonder know, as, if it, yeah. I wonder if it could be useful for some people who, um, for, you know, for somebody who might have a special need to um, make an appointment so that they know that they can go in and out quickly um, and there won't be um, a reason that they have to wait. I suppose that only is an issue if, if we end up getting so many patrons that we don't have enough space for them all and they have to wait in the parking lot. <laughs> That's true. And I, again, I don't see that that really happening. Um, for patrons that are immunocompromised or are worried about something like that, if uh, I think everyone 65 or over is still encouraged to stay home um, if they can, um, we're still doing deliveries and curbside pickup. So if, if they know what they want, I, I will drop it off at their home for them. You know, it's just something we're doing. Um, that being said, I was actually considering uh, perhaps doing senior hours at at least one of the libraries. So um, you know, I'm working with staff, looking at the schedule, trying to keep an eye on that. But uh, it, any thoughts on maybe doing senior hours? What do you guys think? Oh, that you like the way they do at the grocery stores, the way they've been right. Doing so, them. say 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. to 11 is a uh, is seniors only. Only people 65 and older are allowed in the library. I'm gonna say, didn't you have like a kind of like a group that was like a coffee group that would come in, like <laughs> unofficially? At a yes. Hour? You know um, what I mean? I'm thinking they're like gonna those be so hours. sad when I move those chairs. But yeah. Oh my gosh, no, they were there all day. Oh, they were there all day. Oh, I thought it, they were like, you know, of, uh, nine to like, 10 or something like that. It was a group of, uh, I say five to 10 people in total that would just, you know, they would just come in the library and hang out with each other, whoever happened to be there. And that would oh, last okay. from 10 to two. <laughs> so it, yeah, it was awesome. I miss those guys. <laughs> uh, I think it's not a bad idea to offer the hours. I mean, and if nobody's taking advantage of it, you can always, you know, get rid of it. But I know um, I, some people I've spoken to have been more comfortable with using the grocery store hours. Um, Definitely. And I've, I've heard other incidences where, you know, I know my mother went and she felt it was busier during those hours and everyone had gone out and, and stopped using it completely. So maybe something to try. Yeah, that, that's my concern that I don't want everyone 65 and older come into the library at the same time, because that is a huge demographic for us. So if they actually all came in elbow to elbow, we'd be in more trouble than if we just mm -hmm. let them in gradually. Um, but something to try. Yeah, um, you know, I will, I will look at, into that, uh, talk with the staff about it. And um, uh, I'll get back to you guys. Um, Maybe one library one time, one day in time, and then up the other library a different day in time, maybe to split them up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do them at the same that, that Yeah, I would not do them 10 to 11 uniformly at both. And libraries. even like every other week or right. something. Or even every other day or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, I will. Yes, I will give that serious consideration. 
it's not a bad idea if you have yeah. something for special needs like that to have it as the first hour of the day uh, mm. before you know additional uh, contamination gets into the air. Right, right after we've cleaned, um, yeah. you yeah. come right in. Safe, it would be the safest time to come in. Again, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be safe all the time. We're going to do everything we can to make it as safe as possible, but um, there is no such thing as 100% safe right now. So, can you keep the windows open and uh, as often as we can? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, is there air handling system in the library? Fans and air conditioners? I don't even know. Um, each library is a little different. Um, EHFBL has uh, split air conditioning systems. Um, uh -huh split level on both floors. Uh, Rathbun only has air conditioning in the main adult area. There are two window units. And then in the historical area, there's a new window unit up there as well. Um, Rathbun doesn't have a ton of ventilation downstairs, unfortunately. There's just uh, not a way to do that right now. So, you know, we can prop open the, the fire exit and some of the windows in the, the office, but by and large, there's not a lot of ventilation down there. Has the town considered anything like um... HEPA filters, uh, you know, large room HEPA filters for uh, confined spaces. Would that be helpful? And uh, pardon my ignorance, would that be helpful with coronavirus or just in general? I don't know, but um, okay. there's there's some suggestion that it might. I mean, it's okay. I, I could look into it if. Um, what I've heard with the guidelines is anything like if you have ceiling fans, like EHFPL has three ceiling fans, they're not supposed to be pointed down at uh, circulating air down towards people. They're supposed to be circulating air up towards the ceiling. You're trying to do anything that avoids moving air around too much. So if you have like circulate oscillating fans, you don't want it pointed in any public areas where if somebody were to, to breathe or get moisture out there, that it's going to spread it all over the place. Mm. Uh, that's one of the guidelines in the, the state document. Yeah, I, I don't know if air filters would do the same thing by circulating the air. Um, but. If the state has guidelines regarding um, anything, you know, air air circulation, right, should probably adhere to those. You know, you, right, we have to, yeah, yeah, open open up the windows as much as possible, and avoid, you know, avoid because like the the jury's still out on, um, you know, eight, like Jane was talking about, like AC units, right. Um, the way they just recirculate the air and uh you know the normal filters on those isn't you know isn't going to do anything no, they're not they're not made for particles that small right right, right. so yeah let's, let's let's hope it's cool weather and we can just keep those windows open absolutely as often as possible we will have the windows open um you know it's it's those 80 90 degree days with a hundred percent humidity there's there's not a lot we can do about that but if it's in the 70s mm -hmm. even if it's a little warm we will have those windows open yeah. all right yeah yeah and jane keep us posted on what you find out about um you know the ac units or if circulating air helps or yeah causes trouble Either way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we'll move on to available services, things we will be offering uh, during this uh, limited reopening. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, is that patrons will once again be able to browse the shelves and borrow materials. Um, we'll have spaces marked off for social distancing um, and signs posted to remind people to make sure they are social distancing. Um, the staff is going to be encouraged to either wear gloves or clean their hands immediately after each checkout. Um, all materials that are being returned are still going to be put in the book drop as opposed to people bringing them inside and us um, handling them right away. They're going to be in the book drop. We'll let do the book drop once or twice a day and then quarantine those materials for, that's my next thing, up to 48 hours. We've been doing 72 and uh, we've got a, we've become pretty used to the schedule. So we'll probably stick with that just out of an abundance of caution. Um, when we empty the book drop, we always wear gloves and a mask. Um, computers, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be restricted to 30 minute intervals. Um, we're still working on how exactly to keep, um, to remind folks of exactly how long they've been on the computers. You know, perhaps a, a giant clock, you know, a big digital clock. And when they sit down, we mentioned like, look, it's 1.30 at two o'clock. We're going to have to ask you to leave. Sorry, it's not personal. It's just, you know, society right now. Um, so that you don't get the, oh no, I've only been on for 10 minutes, which will happen. <laughs> uh, 
Um, computers uh, are only going to be for vital functions only. Um, you know, people that are doing very important things for uh, banking, work, job searching, homework, whatever it happens to be. Um, they are not to be used for gaming, watching videos, or non-essential research. Um, but I do not plan to put the staff in the situation of policing that. I do expect patrons to, to, you know, be on the honor system and use their time wisely. Mm -hmm. um, computers in the Rathbun area, as you as you know, or there's four of them all next to each other. That's going to be reduced down to two, um, six feet apart. And anyone that comes in with a Wi-Fi device and is hoping to sit here all day um, is unfortunately out of luck because um, any any device, anytime you're sitting in the library, you are limited to 30 minutes. And that's it. The idea is that we don't want people hanging out here all day. Um, and if you do want to use the Wi-Fi, you're more than welcome to use it in outside, on the picnic tables, in your car, wherever. But uh, we don't want people just, unfortunately, we don't want people spending too much time in the library, uh, just you know, in the interest of public health and safety. Um, the copiers and fax machines, uh, unfortunately, due to the location of our copiers, um, there's really no way we would be able to block those off. Um, I envy the libraries that are able to keep those in a staff area and have the staff be the only ones uh, using them. Um, unfortunately, that's not realistic for us. Um, so the public will have access to the copiers. Uh, we, uh, luckily, the copiers are uh, visible, visible enough from the circulation areas for us to know who's using them, when they're being used, and to go and clean them immediately afterwards. Could people also send emails with something that may need to be copied and um, have one of you guys copy it for them and then put it like curbside if they needed to? Uh, low key, we've already done that for a number of people who have asked. Okay. So absolutely. Yep. Yep. Uh, just call the library, speak to whoever's there. Uh, we'll give you whatever email address, uh, send it to us. We will print it and put it uh, you know, on the curbside pickup table for you. Um, we'll even, if you have something to fax that's important, we'll, you know, if you leave the fax on that curbside pickup table, we'll pick that up, fax it for you, and bring it back uh, with a confirmation. So, cool. Yep. Um, for the historical room, we're going to restrict that uh, initially to just uh, staff and the, uh, the town historian. Um, but Nancy's email address will be posted on the website once we reopen for people to email her um, any questions or research um, issues they might have, although it is always easier when they call us because um, the reference interview is invaluable where she can kind of probe and figure out what exactly it is they're looking for and make sure she gets the right information for them. Um, between the staffing. Um, any questions so far? Been through a lot right there. Good. Um, so as I mentioned before, the staff are going to continue to work in shifts just like we are now. Um, where you try not to have uh, any kind of crossover that, or have as little crossover as possible. Um, so we'll only be calling in substitutes if it's 100% necessary. Um, each staff member has their own work area. Uh, it gets cleaned before and after each shift. And um, we're gonna be doing uh, mid-shift cleanings of all frequently touched services once we're open to the public. Um, the one thing I say after I end every conversation is wash your hands you know, sanitize, wash your hands, or we remind each other constantly. Um, and it's, uh, when you see somebody do it, it, it reminds you to do it. And you, you know, we're very, we wash our hands a lot. We use a lot of sanitizer. And we're gonna continue to encourage that. Um, gloves and plexiglass face shields will be provided for those staff members that wish to use them. And we're going to strictly following all social distancing guidelines. Um, and um, I will be providing uh, every staff member with a checklist of symptoms of common COVID symptoms. Um, if they have a 100.4 degree fever or have any of the symptoms on that checklist, they need to call in sick from work. And anybody that is sneezing excessively um, when they're here is going to be asked to go home. Unfortunately, even if it is seasonal allergies. Uh, any questions about that? Mm -hmm. All right, um, fines and fees. Um, copier and fax services are going to resume uh, and the nominal charge is gonna come back. Um, although patrons will be more than ever on the honor system and asked just to put their, uh, their charge in the, the donation jar that we'll keep out on the desk. Um, late fines, we had already planned to get rid of late fines on July 1st um, and this will, will roll right into it naturally. But while we're doing this 48 hour, 70, 72 hour quarantine thing, it's not really practical to be assessing fines. And given the, uh, the unemployment rate right now, it's not really fair to ask people to, to pay fines, you know, just 
So we will not be assessing any fines or asking for any donations until uh, until after this this crisis ends. So uh, we will advertise a general amnesty, though. So anyone that's been sitting on a copy of you know War and Peace since the '70s is <laughs> encouraged to bring that back because we will not be charging any fines whatsoever uh, during this time period. If anyone's been looking for these guilty <laughs> charge, I'll be dropping them off soon. <laughs> Guilt free. You don't have to even see us, you know, like some people, you know, they have their eyes downcast when they put the <laughs> item up on the desk and they're waiting for a teacher to, <laughs> but now you just put it in the book drop, no questions asked, no fines. So, all right. Oops. All right. Um, and the last thing, uh, supplies needed. Um, as we mentioned uh, before, Clorox wipes are the thing that's in the shortest supply right now. That is one of the top things we need before we can actually reopen. Um, once people start using these computers in the library, we're going to go through those uh, canisters even faster than we are now. I imagine we're going to need at least um, a dozen containers at, you know, between both libraries to get through the month of July. Mm -hmm. um, now, if we can actually just make ourselves uh, some reusable wipes for the staff, that would be, you know, that'll cut down on the use. But I feel like for the patrons, I don't, we're not gonna want them touching the same wipes that we reuse all the time, even though technically it should kill everything. But mm -hmm. for um, safety and the, the feeling of safety, we're gonna need the, uh, the Clorox wipes. So again, if the Lions Club is sitting on a supply of them, we will gladly take those off the Lions Club's hands. <laughs> um, Sanitizer we are set on. We have dispensers all over the buildings. Um, they're all full and we have a one gallon jug of um, refill sanitizer that we're able to um, to use at any time. So I think we're more than set for the month of July, provided that you know we can get more uh, when we need it. Uh, plastic gloves, we're probably okay for opening. There's about a thousand of them in the box and we haven't gone through them that much since uh, it's just staff right now. We will start to go through them, start to go through them a little bit faster, but um, we have enough to, to start. Uh, we do not have disposable face masks, but I know that's something on the town shopping list because every town department where the public visits is going to need them. Um, and the town is also ordering the plexiglass face shields. Um, and I think we only have about a dozen employees working right now. So six at each library uh, would be more than enough. So people won't have to share. All right, and that's, that's stage three. That's what we have so far. Um, I know there's still a lot to be worked out. Uh, we're still a few weeks away from that target date of July 6th. And uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, questions and variables and stuff that's gonna come up between now and then. Um, are there any questions before I? Um, I just have up? one question. Yeah. Um, so I know it's sort of like the grocery store. Right. Um, where the biggest issue in terms of like people directly coming into contact with things um, is if someone picks something up off the shelf and then puts it back and then someone else comes along right after them and picks the same thing up off the shelf. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, there's uh, our local grocery, there's signs up, you know, reminding people not to, um, you know, just t basically take what you touch. But right. I don't, you know, in a library situation, that's going to be much, much harder. Much harder. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, like, um, are, are patrons just going to have to have a, a certain amount of self awareness, making sure you know, realizing that any any of those books may have been touched in the last, you know, less than, you know, recent may have been touched right. recently, and they need to clean their hands before they. Uh, yeah, that's, that's currently the, the plan that, um, you know, when you use the library, it's at your own risk and that you really need to wash your hands or sanitize them immediately after you're done selecting your items. Um, okay. Some libraries are saying, you know, any item that gets, you know, if you touch an item, give it to us, we'll clean it off and put it back on the shelf. We could do that. Uh, uh, you know, that's that's that rough on the be, supplies. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, no, the, yeah. the staff is already going to be running around like nuts. You know, right, that's one more thing. And all that kind of stuff. Um, is there any way to encourage, like if people have a mask on, right. so they're not touching their face, and they clean their hands, if they can be reminded to clean their hands when they come in the building? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, each library will have uh, dispensers right as you're, you know, at the entry points. But, you know, is there a way um, to make a point of like your, you know, like at the grocery store, they have hmm. people get a clean pair of gloves when they walk through the door. 
Sure. And like, you know, like I feel really comfortable with that because like if somebody walks in from their car with a pair of gloves, it's like, I don't know where those gloves have been. They might as well just right. have their own hands, you know? Um, yeah, it's more for them than you at that I mean, point. Yeah. <laughs> you know more about germs than I do. I mean, is how do you, what do you think about that? You know, I know that paper materials are not a real hotbed for the uh, COVID virus right. anyway. Paper materials are not a real hotbed, but also I think that we're living in a society now where this is the norm to kind of be more aware of your surroundings, of the fact that you want to watch, you know, sanitize your hands before you go in someplace. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's reasonable to have the staff Every time someone picks a book up, looks at it, yeah. the and then puts it back to go right. around, like right behind them and clean it. Right. <laughs> you know, I think you just maybe like a simple sign as they're walking in. But yeah. I think because we've been going through this for several months now that it's kind of drilled into our heads. Yeah. To take those precautions and to be just know your surroundings, know that whatever you've touched has the potential. But right. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's reasonable to have the staff go around doing that. Yeah, I think it might be reasonable to have a sentence, you know, a short sentence that the staff says when people check books out saying, you know, please remember, uh, I mean, wash, we will have to wash your hands, you know, rather than just right, we have um, sanitizer on the that. desk. So offering the sanitizer to somebody after they've, you know, taken their yeah. items, be yeah, great. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe um, maybe just saying some short sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I tend to uh, be one of those people that gets oblivious on, on some occasions. And, you know, even though I know I'm supposed to, a simple sentence, you know, brings me back to reality. And uh, that it might be useful to have a, and boring for the staff to have a <laughs> saying there's, um, there's a uh, hand sanitizer here. Uh, you might want to use it before you leave the building or, um, yeah, or you know, something that's sort of constructive without being um, annoying. <laughs> well, it'll only be annoying for the staff, not the patrons. The that, patrons only hear it once. Yeah, it's you know, but that's <laughs> for the one I'm saying thinking. it 20, 50 times a day, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah just, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's some way to to just encourage people to use that sanitizer when they yeah. walk in, right? right there, and when you walk out. Again after they've gotten their gotten their books and ready to leave, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we will have the the Ten Commandments of Library rules up on the door as you walk in. So, oh, okay. Sanitize before and after can be one of those rules. Uh huh. Um, and we will have the plexiglass shields up at the circ area, and you can even put like a little sticker or a sign up on that shield right near the hand sanitizer. Yeah, with an arrow forget. like don't forget and you know you know yeah. we're used to Maybe telling people what to do just along mm -hmm. with hey this book is due in two weeks also you know use that sanitizer <laughs> before you touch your face and yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's all I was saying. yeah it's gonna be yeah um good news i do have a meeting with the health inspector next week uh the chatham health district libraries are meeting with uh, the chatham health inspector um, to talk about reopening. So that is one of the questions I'll bring up and see what the other libraries are doing about it as well. Um, the last I heard, the odds of getting COVID from a hard surface like a book um, are basically zero, as long as you're not licking it, as long as it's not wet. It's really <laughs> difficult to contract a coronavirus from a hard surface. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I, will, I will ask the health inspector that question about what to do with people, you know, selecting books and putting them back. All right. All right. So, um, oh. that's yep. all. stage four is just a little thing. Yeah. We don't know what stage four is yet. We're going to ease into it. And, um, yeah, thank you all for your support. Um, so I, I think that, um, it would be prudent for the, uh, board to officially vote to approve this plan for stage, uh, whatever, what is the stage three? Uh, yeah, is according to the state library, we're on stage three. Yeah, the stage three, a portion of stage three plan. Um, is there anything like before I, uh, we come up with the wording on the motion, is there hmm. anything that's in the plan that um, we should have put a caveat on? 
I mean, and the whole plan is tentative, uh, yeah. even more so than the previous plan. I would still yeah. love the board's support and seal of approval on it, but yeah. um, you know, it's we're going to see what happens when the public comes back in. And as I talk to the staff more and more about the plan, see what you know what they're comfortable with, what they would like to see. So this is this is a very tentative plan, but still knowing that you guys support it is is, is helpful, especially okay. once we have to start telling people you need to wear a mask. You know, so if we uh, just to ask the question, if we yeah. bring it up for a vote, doesn't it need to be documented in archives somewhere? Um, hmm. Well, the. Hmm. I mean, it's this not YouTube. isn't really, so. well, we, I mean, this yeah. really our plan. It's the town's plan, and the health districts are really driving this. Right. And this yeah. plan is based off the uh, the state task force uh, plan for yeah. libraries. Yeah. You're just following the rules. I'm a I'm a right. I'm adapting it for our our local right. library. For our, yeah. But in terms of wording of a motion, you may we may want to be careful of how we word the motion, like. Um, the right. board is, uh, will the board, does the board support a plan for opening up the town libraries, including patron access to the interior and uh, computers uh, sometime on or after July 6th, depending on? According to state regulations. According to state regulations um, and modified with input from the town. Um, can, we vote, can we vote on um, a draft plan as presented on the June at the June eleventh meeting, which is archived here on this whatever mm -hmm. your 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 PowerPoint that we just read mm -hmm. and went through, and just call it a draft plan that we're approving? Yeah, How can, you can't approve the draft, can you? Th then it becomes the plan. Yeah, I think we need to show that we're in support of the plan and the outline, but I mean, it's not really our plan to. I, what about using just the word a plan? For well, if you just say a plan, I could, you know. You could go rogue. <laughs> well, no, right. a plan. I, I, I will never go rogue. I'm a librarian. Access, we don't roam, patron but. access to the interior and the computers and whatever i mean just a, a simple sentence rather than archiving this as you know part something we approved could we um just approve a motion that um has some of the phrases in it that you know are going to be part of the plan so, uh i don't know i mean we'll if you support the tentative plan draft. right if you support the tentative plan you are you're supporting the tentative plan you're supporting right. it as presented it doesn't mean it can't change it could still change it's just you didn't okay. expressly you know support those changes so if we um if we if we made a motion to approve the um proposed you know the, the plan for stage three reopening of the library as presented the proposed plan as presented um understanding that potential changes or amendments will need to be made i don't know something you know something along those lines due, yeah due, due to input from the town or the health district and or staff. the state of connecticut yes um, staff. And, staff. Very much. and staff and health district okay who who wants to come up with a motion you you, I you make a motion to uh, have the board approve the draft plan as presented by the library director uh, with the notion that it um, needs to be discussed with the staff, the health plan, and according to state regulations. Okay. I would like to second that motion. Yeah, but I need to write it before we vote on it to make sure that we all- There is a chat feature if someone wants to, if Chris or any, someone wants to mm -hmm. type the motion into the little sure. chat feature and then Jane can copy paste. Right. Oh, that would be great. Right. <laughs> Probably easier to do it that <laughs> my, way. My Technology. Don't touch us. <laughs> and then, yeah. and the, the way it's supposed to work is that we make the motion and then, and then, and then, and then uh, it's open for discussion again and then we vote, so. Um, we can make we can make this motion, and we have we still have one more chance to amend it if we need to. So is 
Is there a way to type it in so everyone? I'm typing can... it in now. You can just wow, copy and paste afterwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a little chat button on the bottom of your screen, Jane. Uh, when Chris Prince? types in, it'll it should like yeah. flash orange or something. You'll need to click on that button yeah. to see it. But yeah, it might be hidden if you move your mouse cursor right. down there. It'll pop up. Yeah, I don't know what device you're you're on right now. So. So I should see it as being typed. Um, but you won't see it until typed. it is typed. I have right? to until finish text. typing it's it. First. It's like a text. Once right. she hits enter, it'll, when she so, sends it, you'll see it. So right. uh, I have to get back up. It scares me when I see myself that <laughs> <in> close. <laughs> um, so, so getting back to the original question, do we need to archive your if we're if we include as presented as presented by the director? Do we need to archive? I, I'm just wondering what to send in with the minutes. Do we want to send in your slides? That would make me feel good. Um, I have to recheck it for typos, but presented, I want to, you know, add something uh, that's uh, documenting it. Uh, you could attach, Michael. What about attaching the Word document that the, the Word would be better? The Word document will be even easier. The one that you you sent. That I know has typos. So if I can just fix those one or two things, like the Oxford comma I was missing, oh, that's sure. been driving I mean, me crazy for I don't a day. Think it has to be I would. Okay. I think the PowerPoint is nice because the PowerPoint goes along perfectly with what was presented today. Yeah, I can save that as a PDF and send it to you. Uh, okay. Jane. Yeah, okay. I like that too. All right. That would be great. And so I'll just add that as uh, embedded in the Word doc of the minutes. You should see what I just typed if you go to the chat area. Yeah. And we can always tweak. Can everybody see that? Yep. yep. I have it to everybody. With the staff, do we want to include the town? Oh, yeah. The, understood with the health department. Maybe town and state regulations. OK. So you can yeah. just copy that yeah. and then just add town and state regulations. Great. And then, uh, and well, then I, I can be able to type copy it right from here. Should be wow. able to if you highlight and control C. Yeah. Isn't the internet amazing? <laughs> there it is. Double-edged sword, it's, but yes. <laughs> nine minutes. That's terrific. Thank you. And we can vote on it. Um, let's see. Uh, I need a second motion. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you already did a second, second motion. I'll second that. I second it. So now uh, Don seconded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so does anyone we can all see the motion now? Um, you know, does that, is there any further discussion before uh, we go to a vote on this motion? Okay, so um all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Unanimous. All right, so moved. <laughs> All right, that was our that was our huge hurdle for tonight. Let's get through that. I think we're done with that, um, and we're on to the next item on our agenda. Um, so, Michael, I know you've been rather busy. A little bit. <laughs> Uh, but it's one of those things where the you know the uh, email would be super helpful to to keep the public informed about how the reopening is progressing, especially since it's changing. Oh, absolutely. Um, I everyone should have gotten an email when the curbside service started. Oh, okay. I hope that you did. Um, if not, uh, let me know. I'll make sure I get your name on that email. Yeah, like, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really look to see if it was like a mass no? email or okay. just something. Okay, so I so I got it. I'll have to send you my address. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double check the uh, make sure you're all on the library's okay. mailing list. Um, I do need to include a link on the website that allows people to subscribe to the mailing list. That is OK, um, but but it's it's going. It's that one went out. And as soon as we're ready for the next phase, that'll go out. Uh, I am planning an email, a mass email to everyone uh, next week about the summer reading programs to let them know Excellent. what's online and what's being offered. So uh, next week is when school lets out. So that's when that's planned to go out. And, and that's through MailChimp? Track. It is through MailChimp. There are other services we can use, but right now we're using MailChimp because that is set up. You know what? I am checking this off the, the box as okay. done. <laughs> yeah. But please continue to check in and, you know, um, make sure that it continues to happen. I, All right. Now that's very exciting. Yeah. Really Sign me exciting. up for it. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> for the minutes I'm adding, mail, uh, email uh, is... Be, is accomplished through mail is now accomplished and through Mailchimp, right? All right. 
Sure. Well, yeah, a library news, an ongoing library newsletter has been formed through MailChimp, such as it is, but yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, our number two is programs for lifelong learning. Um, Jane had brought up, you know, a discussion about, you know, potentially a program about vaccines um, last time. And, you know, I felt like it had gotten uh, sort of squashed without adequate dis discussion about it, you know, just like the knee jerk reaction being, um, uh, you know, and I still think it holds true that we, we as the libraries have to remain uh, like the middle child or the Switzerland of town departments. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we're, everyone should feel comfortable coming into the libraries and not feel like we as an organization have any preconceived um, opinions, you know, or, or we're going to be judging them in any way. Um, so I, I do think, it's, um, especially as we're tr still trying to like, uh, our, our focus for this year is to try and develop more community involvement and more com community support. Um, that being said, um, as far as programs that we might uh, want to present, uh, information that we would like to get out to the public, um, it's something that should be discussed in the program committee, and then it can be brought to the board for further discussion. So does that make sense yep. yeah, it works for me i, I mean that's what the program committee's yes. for so yeah okay so yeah, so it's yeah. just you know it's not that we are are hiding you know like hiding from society or anything we, we just have to make sure that um our primary goal is to be a comfortable open place for everybody yeah. so any any very polarizing uh political or social issues um controversial things. We have to be very careful about what we present regarding those. So it should it should be discussed with the program and then brought to us. All right. Um, any other, uh, I know everyone's just waiting for the official, you know, like reopening, but um, programs for lifelong learning. Chris, you're, you've got another uh, scrapbooking event yes, coming up. Yep, coming up June 25th, I've got probably five people that said they were definitely going to be coming, but you know, mm -hmm. never know what life's going to hit you. But yeah, this time it's going to be more um, actually doing scrapbooking. I'll do something. And then, you know, eventually when things, programs are allowed to be back in the library, something that we could probably, you know, do like every other month or something like that in Sounds the future. Great. Sounds like fun. I can't so wait. Is, is scrapbooking ongoing now and through the internet? It's gonna. It's through the internet. I did um like a um a Zoom meeting um back in April. It right. was kind of like a tutorial, and I had um, people that you know, a bunch of people that did it have been doing it for years and their ideas. And then we've got another one coming up in June twenty fifth, I believe, and it's going to be basically. Um, kind of like a scrapbooking club that, you know, we'll work on our individual things and just talk about what we're doing. Um, one of, I know somebody that hasn't really done it before was going to try to go to the last one and couldn't make it. It's going to try to go to this one just to get some ideas and bounce ideas off of people as we sit around and do scrapbooking. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I had, I had fun last time and, uh, it, it was it was really great having um, you know the people that I have, learned a lot. That, that, yeah, that you have it. <laughs> I went out and bought stuff that like I had never even thought of buying. After I was like, wait, I thought I was the one that was supposed to be teaching this, <laughs> but I got a lot of good ideas from other people. Yeah, so it ended up being more like a you know a club where you're like well, share it. ideas and, and things like that. So yeah, that's good. Um, uh, all right, and the, the other thing on our agenda is um, 100 year celebration, EHFPL. Juliana, is there any move, movement on that or have you been able to I meet? Think would be, I, I think it would be Jane or John, oh, right? For oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I just remember you from the, the book meetings. I forgot that you're the rep and friends. Uh, um, we did discuss it at the uh, last friends meeting, 
um, but uh, the friends have not met. Uh, okay. Yeah, that. the and friends of EHFPL are, are awesome, and I love them, and they do so much for us. Not all of them um, uh, have it, reliable internet access. We'll yeah. put it that way. So it's it's been difficult to meet. Um, right now, all their projects are on hold. Um, we're eager yeah. to start up again, but it's just uh, not yet. All right. Yeah. Um, it's not going to happen. Yes, the um, program they were planning for June 21st to celebrate 100 years is canceled. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's just, yeah. you know, I figured we should uh, just. Yeah, the book sales on hold, and it, it's a lot of wait and see, just like everyone else. Um, Hey, we can have a 101 year uh, celebration next year. So that, I think that that's the, a good option. We People will understand. Years <laughs> next year. There you go. I think for a lot of things, this year is not going to count. You're right. I already decided yeah. my birthday is just a, a <laughs> <laughs> you know, like one year free. <laughs> yeah, one year free. Uh, all right. And then, uh, uh, Support the town in creating a plan to address current needs and future development of EH of the of the library system. Um, so, John, do, do we know is that deed buttoned down now? Do I ask? Do I dare ask? It hasn't been filed by the town yet, to my knowledge. <laughs> it's, as as uh, Rob said at the last meeting, it's all said. It should be done any day. Well, here we are a month later, and. Nothing's happened to my knowledge. Okay. I've had, had, oh, what we're uh, going to do when it's done. I've asked the town clerk yeah. to let me know when it's been processed. And uh, I had to see Deb for some other stuff because of the road repair they're trying to do down the street. And nothing has happened yet. Okay. Well, I know they've been extraordinarily busy, you know, extraordinarily busy trying to keep up with all this stuff. And like everyone else, it's not the biggest priority, but it would be nice when that's It is done. A, officially seven years now. Okay. <laughs> In case anyone's wondering. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to year eight, so. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't Fingers have that crossed mirror. by the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll go for that. Um, I wish uh, I wish Rob were here to you know just let us know if there's been any mo movement at all regarding you know setting up a feasibility study or anything. Um, Michael, do you have any idea, or should we just uh, assume that? The um, I mean, he, they've been extremely busy with a lot of unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. Right now, we're working closely with them just so that we can reopen again, hopefully in a few yeah. weeks. But um, I, I touch base with Rob once or twice a week at least, so I I will bring these up to him uh, the next time I see him. It, you know, it's interesting as we go forward, you know, if, you know, with a potential plan for a new building is that um, social distancing yeah. is going to be, have to be a consideration, you know. Well, it's, it's the consideration. These libraries were definitely not built for social distancing. No. They were built for heat efficiency. So. Yeah, we, we <laughs> thought that the handicap issue was the biggest issue, but uh, yeah. now we've got more layers to that. I'd argue it still is an issue of accessibility overall, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other Absolutely. any other things we need to know about the any of that? Nope. And all right, and community community involvement. You know, that's all. Well, like aside from getting the email up, that's all pretty much on hold until the com the program committee can start meeting again. Right. Right now, the community is not allowed inside, so. so Touch one thing at a time involved. yeah all right do we have an audience of citizens or do we have people um someone tried to log into our instagram account but let me just see if we can any other no i'm not seeing any any citizen questions uh, on the email so uh, they were supposed to email me and i was supposed to address their questions but um um, if anyone is watching, you can call 860-873-8248 in the next 30 seconds, and I'd be happy to happy to present your question, but I, I'm feeling no one asked questions, <laughs> so. All right. All right. Well, we'll just give that a minute, you know, in case yeah. anyone does Absolutely. have any um, questions. Any, anything else on people's minds? Does anyone have a good book suggestion for me? 1918 Pandemic. Oh, no, that's <laughs> way much. too We learned too nothing much. from that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, what other ones? Uh, 
Yes, our catalogers have been very busy because the backlog of books that did not arrive between March and uh, May arrived all at the same time. So uh, Joe and uh, Pat have been just <laughs> swimming in books, which is the way they like it. It's yeah. just, holy cow, those are big boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and more are coming. There's more even back ordered. So. Uh. All right. Oh, uh, one thing I was thinking about, um, normally this time of year, you know, we have that uh, party in June, invite the um, East Haddam Art League, you know, part, in conjunction with the East Haddam Art League. Yeah, that's not happening tomorrow, is it? Because... No. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think it is. I was just wondering if anyone there had contacted you about wanting to reschedule or... They are hoping to do a September show, but uh, as of now, the ban on public gatherings is still, you know, the, the library board's ban on public programs is, is still in effect. So I, I don't know what to tell them about a September art show right now. Yeah. I'm sure we could figure out a way for them to hang up art, but I don't, I don't think there's a way to have an actual reception or anything. Right. September is so far away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, next week is so far away. September is a, a lifetime. So yeah. we'll see. So well, anyway, if you if you see any of the art league members, tell me we miss having a party with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all look forward to that. Don, can I just ask um, the agenda item? I seem to have missed. Uh, community involvement is different from audience of citizens. I, I sort of. Uh, oh yeah. Can uh, you do anything about community involvement? Uh, no, community involvement is is um, you know just one of our goals for the year. That goals we're trying for to outreach, be involved, and, um, and just, not, nothing nothing can really go forward with that if our program committee can't meet. And what about the email, the establishment of the email letter, and uh, the distribution of uh, curbside? Is that part of the um, of the accomplishment that we should put there? I don't know. Is that my god? Well, the email a little bit. No, but the email is an objective, though. Yeah, that's just more of just like providing our, our regular li library service. But um, yeah, we did talk about you know how the you know the email going out under yeah. um, you know the first item in that list. But yeah, that the e email and community involvement definitely go hand in hand. So we're primed and ready to get the word out. Yeah. You know, just letting the community back inside the libraries is going to be a major feat. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, we get 100 pickups a week for the curbside. That is a that is community involvement right there. That in. You know, okay. for COVID, <laughs> that's community involvement. Um, um, online programs are, are, are going OK. So, you know, uh, Maureen was doing a lot of them. So we've got a outreach there. Yeah. Um, popular, popular online, po uh, online programs are popular. Uh, yeah. 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 Good. How many were at baby time, Juliana or story time rather? Okay. I can't go anymore. I can't go. I know. I, I, I had to leave early because she uh, couldn't hold it together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you run out of cheese. It's that's the end. <laughs> no TV, and she ran away, and that was the end of that. Um, but there were, like, let me see, one, four. Story time had at least four of us, four oh, kids, good. four groups of kids, some with multiple kids on. Uh, baby time, we missed. She wasn't in the mood today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, did you say something about the website, Michael, earlier on in the meeting? Something. You said that you were really perhaps have you said that because oh, we were um, shut down there was a working lot from more home. I did a lot of work on on Facebook and the website. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. we're caught up there so, now. Yeah, so I'm just going to add that into community yeah. involvement uh, work accomplished on the work has been accomplished on upgrading oh, the yeah. website. All right, yeah, and, and I can say for a fact it is a full time job. <laughs> right. Okay, we've got minutes. <laughs> okay, yes, no, I, I don't think anyone's gonna call. I don't think yeah. anyone's <laughs>
<laughs> and and with the with the minutes, Jane, um, we're just going to follow, you know, the way we're technically supposed to do it, where you just go ahead and send them to the town, send them to everybody else, and then discussion, uh, you know, about anything that needs to be amended or changed will just happen at the following meeting. Right. So, so that we don't Thanks. accidentally. Thanks. Um, and I'll CC everybody as I send them to the town so everybody knows yeah. what they can vote on. Right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and then we, then we can um, amend them. Um, at the beginning of our agenda for the next meeting. And so maybe I can uh, save 30 seconds to just ask you, I'm not gonna put much details into the director's report because I'm gonna have the um, uh, actual PDF slides embedded. So I can take out almost everything and just say the director's re uh, report included um, uh, the, pl I mean, not the director's report, the plan. Uh, right, the, right, the yeah, plan, you don't, you don't need the plan to discuss. Detail the plan. Yeah. See attached if you're going to attach it. Um, yeah. You can also include the link to this video, which will be uh, available on YouTube. So. Oh God. No, it's true. Sorry, which is where we're at. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Uh, there is one other thing I was going to say. Oh well, it escaped me. All right. Well, this has been a long meeting. Um, well, we covered a lot. I think we did. I think we're good. Oh, do we want to try and have our subcommittees meet for um, July meetings? Um, can we touch base about that after we kind of get a better idea of when the reopening is going to be? Okay. Um, I could certainly use finance committee's help, especially discussing hotspots. But mm -hmm. you know, if, that, if that's the same week as our reopening, I might be a little preoccupied so uh yeah with our, with our flexible new... on the date i think it's a great idea yeah yeah i guess yeah can you check with the town because um oh that's right it, it right. would be it would be small like the subcommittees would be small enough groups where they could meet in person mm -hmm. with masks on and sit outside and I, I will check it. The issue isn't us meeting, it's the audience of citizens, which we have to allow for mm -hmm. X number of citizens to be able to attend any any public meeting. So mm -hmm. I think right now it's 10 adults is the, the limit for an in-person meeting, which we would be fine. There, you know, if all of us showed up, there's 10, but the public wouldn't be allowed to show up, and that's the issue. Mm -hmm. It's 10 inside, 25 outside. Right. So have your yeah. meeting outside. <laughs> there we go. And, and there's no, you know, in theory, in, you know, technically there's no way to, to know exactly how many uh, right. people from the public would want to show up. So exactly. you, you know, it's going to be one or two at most. So the idea is yeah. we, that we have to have a location identified in the agenda at the town that's big enough to hold 25 people, even though we know it's only going to be three of us. I don't know what the magic number is, but uh, correct. But yeah, but I mean, so... So t couldn't 25 people stand in the parking lot of the East Haddon Free Public Library if they showed up? I think they could. I, I will check on this for you. Okay. I, I do not know the answer. <laughs> and and what about Zooms? They're out of, out of uh, possible for uh, cell committee? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we could absolutely. It would be, you know, again, broadcast this way uh, on YouTube and uh, people will be able to access it that way if they chose to. Yeah. So that that's an option, right? Yeah. Depending yeah. on what you get as input. Yeah. I, yes, I will let you know. We yep. could we could zoom if it's if the town. The only reason I think that the town would not would possibly not be doing the the subcommittees is because you know it's just a little bit of a burden on them setting up the meetings yeah. and everything, and if they just you know, don't have the capacity to be doing all the subcommittee meetings along with getting the town reopened. Just to plug, if, if we do feel it's in the public interest to have a meeting, the town will support us in that though, so. Okay. I mean, our, our subcommittees are so tiny. I mean, it's- I know, it's so little. I'm only 5'1". <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right, well, I'm gonna, um, on that note, Michael, if you wanna, I'm, I, I really think that it would be great if the finance committee could meet, yeah. um, even if it is a Zoom meeting. Um, and, you know, the pro, the other the sub, other subcommittees think about that, whether they wanna try and meet or not, I, I think it would be good. Um, and we will, if, if, if no one objects, we'll adjourn our meeting.
Any objections? No objections. 